George Oates. Uh, I'm a designer and I'm also the incoming executive director of the Flickr Foundation. There's lots of benefits to open glam. Um, you create a lot more opportunities for people to see the things that you look after. Uh, so there's a basic increase in access to your materials. Um, your collections will mingle with other materials in new ways, uh, new stuff from different places. And those sorts of collisions and combinations uh, create new uses for your materials. Um, and these arrangements are, are probably things that you wouldn't conceive of or have time to put together yourselves. And there's a chance to gather new perspectives on your holdings and uh, hear new stories about them. And this will allow you to introduce your collections to new people and build new communities around them. There are some barriers to open glam. Um, the number one reason I hear from people who are perhaps uh, nervous about it is that there's no t they have no time. Uh, but if you poke past that first knee-jerk reason, there are other challenges like uh, an in a lack of interest in digital sharing, maybe the organization still prioritizing physical visits over digital interactions. Um, and there's certainly a need for cataloging digitized materials before they can be shared. And that, that is an issue of time and resource. Um, it can also be challenging for some organizations to agree on an approach to licensing and to be fully on board with what an open license actually means. Although we're seeing all kinds of great precedents now over the last decade or so, that, that's sort of the wind is changing on that front. Um, and I've also heard a fear around potential exploitation or loss of perceived income. Um, or there's a nervousness around the possibility that some of the things that you're sharing might be misused or mistreated, um, even if they're in the public domain. So I think we're, we're exploring some new territories around uh, what digital public domain actually means. And, you know, that's, that's just gonna be tested with use. So that's exciting. It doesn't, hopefully it's not a fearful stance. I think over the last year or so, I've had my eyes really opened to um, the, the concept that open isn't always safe. Uh, and there's a cautionary tale, I think, that needs to be told around open glam practice. And that's about making sure that the people who are accessing your open holdings know that they will be safe going in. And by safe, I mean that there's no um, culturally offensive or harmful materials uh, that depict, you know, people in pain or subjugation, that kind of thing. Um, we need to take much more care in sharing these huge data sets online without carefully inspecting their contents. And we have to make sure that they're respectfully and carefully described. And that's going to take a lot of time and uh, it's work we have to do. Um, there's a team called Local Contexts that are doing fantastic work with um, a model they've made called traditional knowledge labels. And that's worth looking at because it's a good grounding in developing new practice around cultural description or cultural restriction or culturally specific licensing. Um, and their approach is great. So that's a strong recommend um, from me. I always encourage people who are hesitating to open up their collections to start small. Uh, I remember back in, the, in 2008 when we were working on the Flickr Commons program, I, I basically did a lot of sales that year. And, you know, whenever I would come up against a hesitant person, I would say, you know, are you sure there's no photographs in your collection that are probably in the public domain? And chances are they turn around and say, oh, you know, how about that giant collection over there? <laughs> So I always encourage people to, to, and, uh, to be comfortable with starting small, um, go with materials that you're confident of in terms of licensing, um, and ideally try to find some materials that you know are interesting to people or popular. Um, and, you know, stay in close touch with the people who interact with you online. 
Um, you know, for example, in the Flickr context, if somebody leaves a, com a comment on one of your photographs, you should say hi or, or thank you if they provide you with new information. You know, it takes time to develop digital community around your collections. So uh, that's time you need to invest. And I always encourage folks who work at cultural orgs to say yes until you need to say no. A lot of times we're hesitant. We're looking at each other, waiting for somebody to say yes. And that's a, that's a really defensive stance instead of a positive one. So I'd encourage you to, to say yes until you need to say no. Mm -hmm.